Hi guys, welcome to part 8. Uh, first thing today we're going to be implementing a basic checkpoint system. So we'll create an empty game object. And how this checkpoint is going to work is that when you um, enter the box collider that will be attached to this game object, then uh, it will set the position of this game object as the last checkpoint. Um, but now, first thing that I want to do is create a gizmo for this um, for this game object. So what a gizmo is, is um, basically like all these things that you see here, the lights and the camera, they've got these little icons, um, which don't appear, of course, in the actual game view. And you've actually got a gizmos tab here, and you can change the size of these icons. Um, so that's what a gizmo is, and uh, we're going to create one for our spawn points. So we'll just create a, uh, a C-sharp script. I'm going to call it box gizmos um, and I'm calling it that because all of these will take a box collider so we'll say require component type of box collider so anything you attach the script to will be forced to have a box collider component and we'll have a public color we can call this gizmo color and now in one of Unity's methods called void on draw gizmos, and this gets called automatically. We can say first of all gizmos dot color equals um, gizmo color, and then we can say gizmos dot draw cube, and for our center we'll say transform dot position plus collide, uh, hold on, we've got to get the components, we'll say get component and we're getting the box collider component dot center and we'll do the same thing for size over here oh, center dot size, just size just like that Okay, and now back in Unity, we'll attach the script to here. Uh, where is it? Okay. So now, if we uh, change the color of this, you can see that um, our gizmo is being drawn here, and uh, if we were to adjust the size of the box collider then the gizmo uh, adjusts along with it okay so just something like that will be fine for our checkpoint area um, so just to rather make it clear the, the gizmo is just for if this is a visual aid in the editor it won't affect the actual game at all um, so now we'll turn this box collider into a trigger and uh, by the way if you want to disable the gizmos um, you can just close up this component or in the gizmos bar here you've got uh, scripts box gizmos and you can just disable it like that and we can even give the script a special icon something like that maybe and now it's differentiated from the other scripts okay so we're going to create a new tag, and this can be called checkpoint. And while we're at it, I'm just going to create another one called spawn, which will be used a little bit later on in the video. Um, and go into mono develop into the player controller, and we'll create a new method um, void on trigger enter. It's another one of Unity's methods that are called automatically. It takes a collider and we can just call that C and we can say if C dot tag is equal to a checkpoint so in other words if we enter that checkpoint then we want to set um, the checkpoint if you remember from part 7 in our game manager 
we've got um, a uh, a spawn position being passed into spawn player, and we can just create now a private vector three called checkpoint, and we'll create a public void set checkpoint which of course takes in a vector 3 and here we can just set checkpoint to the vector 3 that's passed in and now when we spawn the player we'll spawn the player at the checkpoint and we can actually do the same thing over here So, back to the player controller, we need to get a reference to this game manager. So, in our little components place over here, private game manager, manager, and at the start we can just say manager is equal to camera.main.getComponent game manager. And I can do that because the um, the game manager script is attached to the main camera so if you attached it to an empty then you'll have to find that empty using game object or find or whatever um, now in here you can say manager dot set checkpoint c that's the collider dot transform dot position so what remains is to test if that works let's put this checkpoint over here and We'll bring in our saw blade, which is currently the only way to die. And we can put that over there. So you get spawned in over here. And if we run into this, we'll be spawned back here. And if we run into the checkpoint first, and then into this and respawn, it's not working. So we'll have to see why. I think I've got a good idea why, though. We didn't apply the tag. So apply checkpoint. Now let's try it. Run into the checkpoint, run back into here, and now we respawn over here. So that's perfect. Um, we can just call this game object checkpoint. Oops. And we can make a prefab out of it, just like that. And I can delete this checkpoint, and whenever we need a checkpoint, we can just drag one into our scene. Okay, um, so what we're going to do next is a similar sort of thing. We're going to actually drag this right back into the scene. And uh, I'm going to call this spawn. And um, I'm going to change the color to maybe green or something. I don't know. Maybe a blue, yeah. Um, and this is going to take the spawn tag and basically the the game manager right at the beginning is going to look for this spawn um, game object and if it can find it it's going to spawn the player at that position um, so it's spawning at checkpoint so we'll actually treat that spawn position as a checkpoint so we'll say if game object dot find game object with tag and the tag was spawn then checkpoint is equal to the spawns transform dot position okay and otherwise if it can't find it then um, Checkpoint is initialized to zero anyway, by default. So, wherever we put this, so we put it over here. That is now where the uh, the player spawns. And of course I put it way out there, because I'm silly. Um, if we were to put this at zero like it should be, then uh, our player is now here. So... Let me just see, the camera 
is sort of moving over to where the player spawns, which is a little bit irritating. Um, so we'll just go over to the game camera script, and here where we set the target, we can just say um, transform.position is equal to, well, a new vector 3. t.position.x, t.position.y, and transform.position.z. Hopefully that makes sense, just setting it at the target's position. So it doesn't sort of slide across to it. Um, the camera is just already centered on the player when it spawns in. Okay, now one last thing that we're going to be doing is creating a um, end of level point. So um, we can call this uh, level finish. And we can just give this the default finish tag and uh, maybe I'll give this a reddish color and now in the player controller we can say if c.tag is equal to finish then we can call the manager again manager.endlevel which we haven't created yet, but we will now. Uh, where's my manager? Game yeah, manager. Public void end level. So now we need to know, first of all, how many levels there are in the game, and secondly, what level we're currently on. So we'll make a public static int called level count and a public static int called current level. Now I'm not going to go into too much what static is but basically um, it won't reset this value between scenes and uh, that's all you need to know for now. So uh, on the end level, we can say if the current level is less than the level count. So in other words, we still have some levels remaining to be played. Then current level plus plus or plus equals one. And application dot load level. And we can call it level plus current level. Okay, so I'll explain that in a moment um, if you're not familiar with changing scenes. So I'm going to create a new folder in my assets and call it scenes. And this current scene, which I've rather ambiguously named scene, is going to be changed to testing. So this, this scene won't actually be included in the final build of our game. It will just be our sort of testing grounds for new features. Um, and we can create a new scene and save it to the scenes folder. And this will be called level one. Um, and in level one, well, let's go back to testing and actually create an M2. And I'm going to call this um, hmm, something like level main. And this is going to contain all the fundamental stuff for a level. So, for example, we've got our lighting. We need our lighting in a level. And we need a spawn point. And we need the finish level. Um, and there won't really be any, um, any level that or any scene that doesn't have this level main in it, except for our menus and stuff. Um, I want to actually have this at 0, 0, 0. And I'll put the lighting in it and the level finish and spawn. And now I'll make a prefab out of this level main and go back to level 1. And just save my changes. Oh gosh. What should actually be in there as well is the main camera. We won't have 
any any level without the main camera so you can just put that in there as well and now we can apply the changes to this prefab and go to level one and we'll delete this main camera and drag in our level main prefab put it zero 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 so now just like that we have all the vital elements um, of a level in our scene already and we can create a cube which will be our ground um, and we can scale it out a bit and bring these in some and save this and now just to demonstrate changing between scenes duplicate the scene it's already named level 2 for us and just to make it look a bit different to the last one I'll duplicate the floor drag it in a bit and move that over there okay so now we're going to go into our build settings and uh, here we have scenes in build so at the moment if we built the game there'd be no scenes at all to play through but instead we'll start with scene 1 or well, level 1 and level 2 and we won't put the testing in because like I said that's our testing ground it won't actually be in the game um, and now hopefully this makes a little bit more sense here we're saying application dot load level and we're we're going to call it you can call it either with its index or with its name so its index is um, what you can see here not one and subsequent levels be two three four and so on um, or you can call it with its name as a as a string so that's what we're doing here we're having level space one and here we've got level space plus the current level um, and we can say else debug.log so this else will be called when um, when the current level is actually equal to the level count in other words you finished all the levels available to be played in the game and we'll add you know an end of game thing here later but for now we can just say game over just so we know that the players reached the end of the game and now if we hit play oh right of course don't forget fundamental this has to have the collisions layer applied and same story with the other scene collisions save and go back to level one so now if we spawn in here we can walk across to end level and it's already saying game over that's because um, we haven't set these variables so level count well we've got two levels and the current level well you start on level one so back to unity play we get spawned here we walk to the end of the level and we get spawned into the next one and we walk along here and it's printing game over so that's everything for this tutorial and uh, hopefully i'll see you in part nine cheers